Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. This video is going to be a Q&A slash mukbang in which I try weird exotic fruits. Well, I guess depending on where you live, they may not be considered exotic, but here in Miami, they're definitely exotic. So I'm not going to be eating all of these, I'm going to be eating bits and pieces, but I thought it would be fun to describe them to you as I eat them and show them to you guys in case some of you have never tried these before. So all of these fruits are pretty ripe, but I'll just go through them quickly before I start so you all know in case you've never seen them before. So this one is a jackfruit. Then I also have a few lychees left. I think it's focusing. I don't really know. I don't think it is. Now it's focusing. Okay. Um, and then I have a sapodilla, and I also have a mame sapote. So if any of you live in the Miami area, I actually got these from my friend Rain, who runs a business called Miami Fruit, where he sells exotic or more non-traditional fruit to people in Miami, but he also ships across the United States. So if you're interested in checking him out or sending him a message, he has a variety of other fruits as well. I will leave his information in the description of this video. Okay, so I have the questions from the Q&A on this here, and I just realized that I forgot a spoon to eat this with, so I will be right back. Okay. We're good. Kind of. All right, so I'll probably just start with the smallest one first. So I'm gonna start with the lychees, and uh, okay, I'm out of breath from going off the stairs. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the lychees, so for these, I just kind of bite them to crack them open and then peel them. Maybe. Okay. So you just kind of, so you just kind of bite it and then that's what it looks like on the inside. And there is a seed in the center as well. So I'm just gonna peel all three of these and then I will eat them. Here, I'll move this out of the way for now so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, so the first question was, is anyone else in your family vegan? How has being vegan affected your physical health and is it easy to eat as a vegan where you live? So we have three questions. Um, no, nobody else in my family is vegan right now. My immediate family is vegetarian, so my parents and one of my younger brothers are vegetarians. And being vegan has drastically affected my physical health. I feel like I just have so much more energy. I feel so much more vibrant. And I just like, because I'm a more conscious person now that I'm vegan, I just feel like I connect like with the earth and want to be outside and all that hippie BS or whatever. And then is it easy to eat as a vegan where I live? So I think it's easy to eat as a vegan wherever you live if you stick to whole plant foods and you cook for yourself most of the time. And to be honest, I cook for myself 99% of the time because I'm technically because well I don't know um and to be honest I cook for myself 99% of the time because I'm on a budget so it's just cheaper to cook for myself so personally I think it's really easy to be vegan if I went out to eat I still think it's pretty easy to be vegan like there are a few vegan restaurants in Miami but there aren't that many but like if you go closer to the beach there's some juice bars and stuff and they always have vegan slash vegetarian options but just kidding, I lied. I'm just going to eat these as I go because I don't really feel like putting it down on the cutting board. But yeah, this is what the fruit looks like. It's just like a little ball. And then there's a seed in the middle. It's really hard to describe the flavor, but it's kind of crunchy, but soft. Mmm. sweet and like almost kind of lemony but yeah these are really good so um so someone else asked how did my body first react to being vegan and they are finding that there are a lot of effects that bloggers don't always talk about that can really worry people who are trying to start it and what are the normal initial reactions from your body from going vegetarian to vegan so really that depends on the person and it depends on your path so like for me i didn't really come from a standard american diet because i was raised vegetarian 
so I didn't really have as many adverse reactions going vegan I think and then also like the few months before I went vegan I was eating a mostly vegan diet I was just eating dairy like occasionally but not very frequently so personally I didn't really have a big detox period um I think my skin might have gotten a little worse initially but then it cleared up pretty quickly too because once you get rid of dairy your skin just like usually clears up dramatically and I didn't really have any problems with digestion or stuff because like I said I was mostly eating a vegan diet but it can really vary from person to person but that should to be expected because your body is used to you eating all of this crap and then once you go vegan it's like it doesn't even know what to do with all the nutrients that you're giving it basically so you can experience bloating if you're not used to the fiber intake of eating a lot of vegetables and you can feel tired but I would say definitely make sure you're drinking enough water and definitely making sure you're eating enough calories because a lot of people are used to eating smaller portions because things like meat and dairy are more calorically dense um but vegetables are like obviously lower in calories uh yeah okay I'm gonna move on to the sapodilla I don't know if you guys have seen this before to me it kind of looks like a potato on the outside just like the color and texture of it but it should be like a caramelly brown in the center there's a seed in the center of this as well and I think that this one seriously tastes like brown sugar and pear mixed together it is so good so this is what a ripe one focus looks like on the inside and there are like two little seeds on each half this one is definitely one of my favorites mm. it's so sweet it's like legitimately eating sugar it's so good okay so my friend michelle says some study tips i'm currently struggling real hard and yes to my fun yeah you're doing my fun um i don't know i think every person needs to figure out what form of studying works best for them because for me personally i don't study well in groups unless i already know the material and then it's really helpful for me to reiterate the information and to help other people but like for me, I have to write everything out and handwrite it. You actually learn more when you handwrite things out versus when you type them. Um, so I usually write everything out. I use flashcards to try to memorize it. And yeah, I just don't really work well on an electronic screen, like with anything really. I don't use Quizlet, I make my own flashcards. And then I just do repetition. And I always try to study in a quiet area versus a really loud or noisy area and I definitely don't listen to music when I'm studying even relaxing music because it's been proven that the area that you study in is like the environment that you will best remember the information in so for example you're studying while you're listening to Taylor Swift it'd be a lot easier for you to remember that information if you were listening to Taylor Swift on your test so I just try to study in the quietest area possible because obviously when you take your tests it's usually pretty quiet as well and um, yeah okay so next question is my favorite food if i could be anywhere in the world where would i be and my favorite books now food is so hard i hate when people ask me that because i like literally love so many foods like i would say sapodilla but i don't eat these very often so it's like extra special because it's like a treat but I guess my favorite foods would probably be like Japanese sweet potatoes for sure. Um, this one's like falling apart. That's fine. Um, and then I really love corn. I really love peas. I really love jasmine rice. And hmm, for fruit, I would say bananas because duh and I don't know one of these fruits but they're also good but I feel like I, my list is getting really long and I just kind of like list all the foods you eat but probably mame it's so good guys can't wait to show you um but yeah okay so the next question I kind of already answered it was how did you deal with fiber in the beginning of your 
vegan journey. And like I said before, I was vegetarian before I went vegan and I was already eating a really high fiber diet because I was primarily eating plant-based foods as a vegetarian. So for me, it really wasn't that big of a deal. But like I said, my tips would be to drink a lot of water and just know that your body will adjust. But if you feel like it's been like two weeks or so and you're still getting like really bloated and having like pregnancy bellies after your meals, maybe you should look into food combining rules and see if some foods just upset your stomach more and cause you to be more bloated. Like for me, nothing really affects me like that. So it's not that big of a deal. But yeah. Next question is, do you like acai? And why do I prefer to eat a high carb, low fat diet? Yes, I love acai, but it's just kind of expensive, so I don't eat it very often. And I prefer to eat a high carb, low fat diet because that's what I feel like makes me feel my best and gives me the most energy. And it's just really fun to like eat a large abundance of foods. Okay, so next I'm going to open this Mame Sapote. And as you can see, it's really ripe, it's really soft, but it's brown on the outside. And it's like a neon salmon-y color on the inside. I'm so excited to show you guys. And I'm not going to eat all of this because one, this was expensive and I don't deserve to eat all in one sitting. I'm gonna savor it slowly. But I did wanna show you, so I'll eat like some of it. Okay. And this fruit is like really dense. It's kind of like a sweet potato. And then like the taste is kind of like a sweet potato too, but it's a lot sweeter, but it's like a really dense, like almost like cooked soft sweet potato texture. Okay, are you guys ready for this? Look at the seed in the middle, huh? But look how bright it is. It's like incredible, oh my gosh. This one looks really good. Okay, I'm just gonna cut like a piece off of it. I'm gonna eat this. Let me see if I can show you guys the texture. See, like, it's like super, I don't know, uh, it's not focusing. I don't know how you can see, but it's like super dense and super delicious. If you can ever get this fresh, go for it. Oh, I love fruit, guys. I just love it so much. Okay. Anyways, next question. What do you eat if you're at a family party, like a birthday, and there are no vegan options? Well, to be quite frank, I don't really believe you because I feel like there are always vegan options, but when you go to a birthday party, they're probably gonna have appetizers, so like they have like a vegetable tray, or even if they have a cheese plate, the crackers on the plate might be vegan, um, or like chips and salsa is vegan. I feel like those are all pretty common party foods, but I mean like if they're only serving pizza, then yeah, there's not a vegan option. But personally, you said it was a family party, so especially if it was a family party, I would feel no, like, I would not feel ashamed to tell my family members that I was vegan and just let them know I would be bringing food or if they were a closer family member, like, asking them to make a vegan option for me or just, like, have some fruit or something that I could snack on. And, look, I did my last two vlogs ago. I went out to brunch with my friends and I didn't really know if there was going to be a vegan option, but I just ate a meal beforehand and being vegan shouldn't put a damper on your social life. Like you can still go out and hang out with your friends at those restaurants. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, you just don't have to eat or bring your own food and explain to them that you have a dietary um, lifestyle that's a little different and they didn't have any options on their menu and like maybe that will even convince them to add vegan options to the menu. But yeah, family birthday parties, if there really wasn't something, I would pack food, but I would usually pack an emergency snack just in case. Anyways. Um, someone asked, am I going to visit Germany? And I would really love to. I just don't know. I have so many places that I want to travel. It's kind of hard right now because I'm in grad school. So I can't really like, one, afford to travel to a lot of places. And two, I don't have the time. But I'm traveling around the United States in August on going to Seattle and Portland. So if any of you are in those areas, definitely let me know. We can try to meet up. I'm going to try to have a meetup in Portland. I'll be staying with my friend Ella. She's also on YouTube here, so I'm so excited to meet her in person. But yeah, we're going to do a meetup in Portland. I'll post about that on my Instagram. And then I'm also going to Martha's Vineyard. It's an island in Massachusetts. Um, but yeah, I think sometime maybe in December or January, I'm going to try to go to like Bali or Thailand, but we'll see. But anyways, hopefully eventually I will make it to Germany. Um, the next question is, am I involved or interested in any other humanitarian movements? If yes 
or no slash why um I wouldn't say I'm like as invested in any other humanitarian movements as much as veganism just because I just feel so strongly about veganism and as you can tell I like really like food and I feel like that is a big part of the vegan lifestyle and it's easier for me to show people how easy veganism is because I can make vegan food and like make it look delicious and it's like one of my talents so I feel like I should focus more on that but that being said I still agree with a lot of ethical or humanitarian movements that are going around for example recently I've really been interested in ethical fashion I watched the true cost on Netflix and I've been like doing more research and watching Kristen Leo on here and I always think that's like really interesting and it's important to think about your fellow humans too and to like consider that they might have crappy lives as well and that we should change that and yeah I don't know what humanitarian movements are you guys interested in let me know maybe I'll like jump on to those too mm, next question favorite food and favorite book of all time so I just realized that I forgot to say my favorite book um on the last question but I don't really have ugh, a favorite book I really loved sci-fi and like magic novels when I was a kid growing up. I loved Harry Potter, I read it multiple times, but now like I said, I don't really read as much. Um, but I have been reading a book, <laughs> it's too far away, but it's like right over here. It's creative, visualization, and the author, I'm going to butcher their name, but, uh, so I'm not going to say it. Um, but I will put a picture like somewhere here on the screen in case you guys are interested and I would definitely recommend it. It's a really awesome book. It's not like a fiction story or anything, but it's kind of like how to visualize your future and like manifest things that you want, like law of attraction, etc. And I just think that stuff is really interesting. Um, someone asked, am I planning on coming to California again? I would like to. Guys, I just want to go and travel around and see the world and all these different cultures and meet you all. I just need to find the time. Um, then her second question was, how do you feel about being people's inspirations or being looked up to? <laughs> Seriously, that's so, I don't know. It's really hard for me to like think that people look up to me and find me inspiring because in my eyes, I'm still like a normal person. And guys, to be completely honest when another YouTuber comments on my stuff or like another famous Instagram or follows me, I probably freak out as much as you guys. I'm like, oh my God, like they noticed me. And so for me, it's like kind of strange. Like I'm honored, I'm definitely honored, but it's strange because I just consider myself to be like a normal person. And I don't really see people looking up to me, but Hopefully I'm a good enough person to be considered a role model. Mm. Um, okay, this person asked a lot of questions, so I'm just going to pick like one or two of them. They said, mm, what is, oh, do I like live city living or country living? Mm, that's hard. Um, okay. So I think at this point in my life, I'm going to say like city living because I like being like close to cultural kind of meccas like New York City. There's a lot of different cultural experiences you can have there and you're really close to a lot of vegan restaurants or even like a city like Miami. There's not a lot of vegan restaurants, but there's like a lot of things and activities that you can do. But at the same time, you're still like close enough to nature where you can get out and explore if you want. But I feel like when I'm older, I'll probably, you know, settle down a little more and I won't want to do as many like adventurous or exploratory things. But I mean, who knows? But I think it would be nicer to like live in the country then and just like be by nature because I do love just like going into nature and being surrounded by nature and just like relaxing. But I think right now I have to go with city living. Um... Okay, so she said, when people find out you're vegan and say, but you're not one of those crazy vegans, right? And you want to be pleasant and say, no, I don't care, you you, but in reality, I'm judging them really hard and I definitely care. I mean, personally, I don't care when people ask me that question because I like proving them wrong. Because for me, I don't like go up to someone when I meet them for the first time and be like, hi, I'm Caitlin, I'm a vegan. That just looked like scarily like Nicole Arbor's Dear Vegans video, I just realized. But it was not intended to be like that. But anyways, vegans don't do that, which is why Nicole Arbor was wrong. But um, I usually just like bring it up with inside conversations. Like they'll be like, oh, do you want to go out to eat at this restaurant? And I'll be like, if it's a steakhouse or something, be like, oh, no, I can't really eat there because I'm a vegan. Or like I'll be eating my food 
and then they'll ask me like, oh, did you put cheese in that? I'm like, no, I don't eat cheese, I'm a vegan. So like, they usually know me first. So they know I'm not like crazy. I mean, I hope they think I'm not crazy. So I don't really get that reaction. And if someone did ask me that personally, I wouldn't take it to heart and like take it as an offensive comment. Um, because there's just like a stereotype, but you're definitely probably proving the stereotype wrong. And yeah, I would just be like, no, are you one of those crazy meat eaters? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Someone said I should come to Chicago. And yes, I actually, Chicago is on my bucket list. I do want to make it there. Um, did I ever, someone asks, do I ever feel weak when I first became vegan? And no, because I made sure that I was eating the right amount of calories. I feel like that's a big issue when a lot of girls go vegan and also because it seems like a lot of girls who have had eating disorders or used to eating like really small calorie restricted portions come to veganism. You don't eat very much and then they just like get really tired and feel weak and like pass out or whatever. So you definitely just need to make sure you're eating an abundance of whole plant foods and like don't just like that stupid rule where it's like, oh, when you like feel like you're going to be full, you should stop eating. Like, no, you're not eating enough. Your body's not telling you that you're full or whatever. But yeah, um, if you're like new, new, new to the vegan lifestyle, I would never really suggest counting calories because I think it's a huge waste of time. But if you're really concerned, I would advise like putting in um, like a few days worth of calories onto chronometer.com just to get like an average of what you're eating and make sure it's over 2000 calories because that should definitely be the minimum of calories that you eat in a day like the world health organization considers a diet under 2100 calories a starvation diet so yeah definitely make sure you're eating enough and that's the only reason you should really feel weak as a vegan because personally i'm like busted with energy i wake up in the morning and i'm just ready to take on the world um my camera's doing something weird. I don't really know what's happening. Yep, it cut off on me. Um, sorry about that. I just ruined the continuous muff on. But anyways, all is well. Um, someone asked how much do I typically need to eat in one sitting to feel satisfied? And I feel like that's kind of related. It depends on the food because some foods are more calorically dense than other foods. So like, if I'm eating banana ice cream, personally, I don't think bananas are very calorically dense. So I eat like a pretty big bowl of that. But if I eat that same volume in oatmeal, which is a lot more of a filling food and a more complex carbohydrate, so you feel full for longer as well, I probably feel sick if I ate the same size bowl of oatmeal and banana ice cream. But like that comes with time being vegan. So you get used to knowing like how you feel after you eat certain foods and you have a general idea of how much food you want to eat. But that being said, if you get really, rewind. Um, that being said, if you are really, really hungry one day and you eat a lot more than normal, you should in no way feel guilty about that or you shouldn't feel bad. It's just your body needing more fuel that day and yeah, so still be in tune with your body, but it's also good to know like general estimates of how much food you're going to eat. And that comes with time just because like you don't want to spend an hour cooking rice and then eat it all and be like, I'm so hungry. What do I eat now? But generally, I always cook enough food to have leftovers. So I never really run into that problem. I'll just run into the problem where I don't have leftovers. Um, okay, next question is... Were your parents okay with you going vegan? Uh, yeah, absolutely, actually. I was kind of, for some reason, nervous to tell my parents that I decided to go vegan, but my parents actually were vegan for a while. I talk about that in my vegan story a little bit, if any of you were interested. But when I told them I was going vegan, they were actually so supportive and so happy for me, and um, I really appreciate that. My parents have always been really supportive of me. So being vegans themselves and like being vegetarians now, they've already dealt with all the like, you're not getting enough of your nutrients like themselves. And they know that I'm a healthy person and I eat a well-balanced diet. So they're not concerned about me nutritionally or anything like that at all. And someone asked, what's your favorite breakfast, lunch, and dinner? So that's 
hard, you guys. Ugh. Okay, breakfast, I'm gonna say banana ice cream, but I'm not gonna get more specific than that because it just depends on the day. For lunch, I usually eat cooked food for lunch. Um, I really like eating leftovers. Is that a thing? I think a lot of people like that. Um, even like cold food. I just like eating like a leftover curry or a chili with some rice and like fresh greens. I always think that's super refreshing. And then for dinner, I would have to say like an oven roasted sweet potato with some white jasmine rice and corn and peas and lots of sriracha. This sounds so amazing. Um, okay, so I'm not getting any more of this. I'm gonna eat the jackfruit because I wanted to show you guys how to open a jackfruit. But I don't really know how to open a jackfruit. <laughs> so we're just gonna wing it. But yeah, this is the jackfruit. It's ripe. It's ripe when it's um soft and you can kind of smell it. It's like sweet. So I'm gonna put this food stuff in my trash bowl. And this is about to get really messy, guys, I'm pretty sure. So um jackfruit has like silicon in it basically so it's kind of hard to get the fruit out i'm going to get rid of these pillows this is a struggle okay so jackfruit has like silicon in it so i think it's kind of harder to get the fruit out but as you'll see shortly the inside there's like pods and then the pods have seed in them too i don't know if i should like google this so i don't majorly screw it up well, like, I could just rip it. I'm just gonna rip it, because it's so soft. So it's like, look how strong I am. That was really, really pitiful. Um, yeah, okay. This is not really working out that well. Okay, so the next question, as I open this, I think I might have gotten this. Let's in, let this get a little too ripe. So it's kind of like mushy. So we'll we'll see what damage recuperation we can do. I just wanted to use it for the video, and I kept being busy and didn't have time to film. And um, this stuff looks okay. Okay. So someone says. Are you planning on getting into relationships in grad school or do you feel it's better to wait? Um, I don't know. I'm not like obsessed with finding a boy by any way, shape or form. But that being said, if anyone knows of cute vegan boys, like where are they all at? Because I haven't seen them. And they're all in relationships when they're on YouTube. But anyways, like I'm not dying to get a man or anything. But like if I came across a guy in grad school and he was willing to deal with my busy schedule, I'm not gonna say no. And like life doesn't wait for you, so I don't think you should wait for an opportunity if it's like knocking at your door. So in reality, I mean, I highly doubt any boys will be interested in me. But if someone was, um, yeah, sure, whatever. I would go for it. Okay, I think I can get a pod. I feel like this is like Okay, I'm not go getting very far, guys. I'm just gonna cut it. Eh. Also, this table is like super cheap, so it's not very sturdy. So I'm like making tons of noise. Ha! Okay, it's fine. There's just some like really mushy spots, but it's okay. This is the inside of the jackfruit. And you can see, oh my gosh, it smells so good. These are the little pods. Oh, this smells so good. I'm so excited. And jackfruit like literally tastes like a juicy fruit bubble gum in the best way possible. Okay, so here's a little pod here. I'm gonna try to get it out. Um, so, so another person asked me, what do I use as a background for my photos? And they mean like the marble one, I think. And other people have asked me where my marble cutting board is from. And to be honest, guys, I don't really know because my mom gave it to me. She had had it for a while and it's a cutting board. It's not like my countertop. I'm too poor to afford marble, let's be real. Um, 
but yeah my mom gave it to me and i don't really know where it's from so i'm sorry but it's really old and they probably don't even sell it anymore and i'm really struggling trying to get this jackfruit out oh my god okay no maybe yes no Okay, got a piece. It's a little mushy on my end. I'm just gonna cut the mushy part off. Oh my gosh. I haven't had jackfruit in forever. And this is so good. The one good thing about Miami is even though they don't have a lot of vegan restaurants, they have a lot. The climate is like really good to grow exotic fruit in. So they have more like Asian fruits like this. I need to find a good durian though because the one I had was really gross. That wasn't in Miami though. Yeah. Okay. So. Um. My exercise routine. That's always a big question. Guys, to be honest, I don't really have a very intense exercise routine right now. I'm just doing yoga every day. And they asked me if I cycle. And the answer is kind of yes, kind of no, because I do have a bike and I do cycle, but I use it more for transportation, like getting to and from school versus like going on a ride. But eventually I do have the intention of using my bike as more as a fitness bike as well. But I'm not really familiar with the area. So I don't really know like any things to go on. I think my friend Ray sold me this fruit said there was a good way to get to like the beach and that he might take me some time. So I don't think he's watching this, but Rain, show me that. Um, How do I find vegans in my area? And the girl is 16. Well, first I would suggest checking meetup.com. It's a free website and they have like tons of different groups on there. They have vegan groups and they have like book lover groups or whatever, but check the vegan ones. And there may be like more adults on there, but it still doesn't hurt to get to know them because you never know, they might have kids and you can meet their kids. Another thing I would do is um, check out vegan or vegetarian like friendly restaurants in your area. And because obviously vegans will go out to eat there and we all love food. So we'll take pictures of our food and post it. And you can like find accounts through there. I've actually found a few different vegan friends from there. Um, so see if you can find, guys, I'm failing at getting this jackfruit. Um, see if you can find someone through there and just like message them on Instagram and be like, hey, if you'd ever be interested in getting lunch sometime, that'd be awesome. Or, you know, get involved in social media. You don't have to have friends in real life and just like give it time because I don't really have that many. I don't have any. Well, just kidding. I don't have that many vegan friends in real life in Miami. I do a few. Um, but I have tons of friends on social media, so I don't really feel like alone or isolated as a vegan. Oh, my fingers are like sticky from the jackfruit. Okay, I got like a pod so I can show you guys. Well, this is getting really sticky. Okay. So see, it's in like yellow pods and then you can break the pot open. Well, that's a fail, but there's usually a seed right there inside. Delicious. Um, someone else says, you mentioned a couple times to go to church. Are you a t Christian or any tips for vegan Christians? Um, technically I'm a Christian. I am Catholic and I go to church, but that's just not something I really want to talk about on social media because I feel like you always get a backlash when you talk about religion and yeah, but I will say that I think like the really gung-ho Christians who tell you that God says we can eat meat in the Bible are just plain wrong and ignorant and um, stupid. So yeah, don't spend your time with them. Just kidding. I mean, you should spend your time with everyone and love everyone, but like they're just really wrong. Um, someone asked, am I vegan with my diet only or do I include makeup, clothing, hair, body stuff, etc.?" And if a person is only vegan in their diet, they really can't call themselves a vegan because a vegan veganism isn't just a diet, it's like a lifestyle. So you're completely against animal cruelty. So as a vegan, I am also completely against animal testing and the use of animal products in other things as well. 
so yeah i like use completely vegan hair care and makeup i do have a few items that i'm like using up but i will not be repurchasing and everything that i purchased since going vegan has not been tested on animals and has been cruelty free um if you're a vegan with your diet only that would be more like the plant-based terminology that people tend to use and you wouldn't technically be considered a vegan even though you eat vegan foods but yeah why not just go vegan it's like awesome you can eat jackfruit and i'll do a few more questions i feel like this video is already pretty long so someone says how i'm motivated to do yoga every day and how long have i been practicing so i mean i've been doing yoga for a while i always like liked it well not always but like for the past two years or so i've been doing yoga kind of like on and off but i didn't really make like a huge habit of it but i've always like liked it and admired other yoga people so i just decided to try it myself and i'm motivated to do it every day because right now i'm doing like a 90 day yoga challenge i mentioned in my favorites video for may that i really liked fight master yoga and she has a sorry i'm trying to rip this Ugh. she has a um a 90 day yoga challenge so it's 90 days of full yoga videos they range from like 20 to 45 minutes so there's one for every day so i just do that and i really like them and i really like her like as a teacher i would recommend her to everyone she's my favorite one on youtube i don't really like some of the like other more popular ones but yeah find a teacher who you like and you should be motivated to do yoga and if you don't like yoga and don't find yourself motivated to do it maybe you should find like another exercise routine that you like and that you're motivated to do like if you really like lifting weights and like following a program like that then i would say go for that because at the end of the day you exercise shouldn't feel like a chore it should be something that you like look forward to um someone says what's my favorite outdoor activity mm, i'll probably say hiking because i like like being proactive with my time and while like sitting at a beach and relaxing is nice I like when hiking, like you get to explore other areas and stuff too. And someone asked, do you think if you known about the cruelty and unfairness in the animal industry as an early teen, would I have gone vegan then? Uh, yes, absolutely. But I wasn't really like that much into like vegan YouTubers or even really food then. So I didn't really come across the ethical side of veganism until I was in college. But I think it's so awesome that there are so many young teens who are into that and who turn vegan so early. And you guys are just going to be so much more experienced afterwards. And it'll be so cool that you can say you've been vegan for like X amount of time in your life. Like you got so many years on me. And I'm just, whatever. I'm still happy that I went vegan though. That's like, I was saying like the only regret that you have is that you didn't go vegan sooner. And I completely, 100% agree with that. Okay. Um, someone asked, why do I wake up at like 6.15 every morning, including weekends, and when do I go to bed? And I actually saw this question before and it made me laugh because 6.15 is sleeping in for me on the weekends. I wake up at 5.30 on the weekdays. But I just, sorry. I just try to make it a habit to wake up early because I feel like I get so much more done in the mornings versus at night when I just want to sit on YouTube and do nothing. So I wake up early to get my stuff done. Um, and going to bed early definitely makes waking up early easier, obviously. I try to go to bed between like 9.30 and 10, but if I have like an exam the next day or something that I procrastinated and forgot to do, I might go to bed like 10.30, but I usually try to get like between seven and a half and eight hours of sleep. And if I'm going to bed at 9.30, just really works best for me if I'm waking up at 5.30. I usually don't go to bed earlier than 9.30, though. Um, I can't scroll. My hands are too sticky. Okay. <laughs> Someone says, do you have any tips for staying in a hotel on holiday as a vegan? Because they won't have access to cook any of their own meals. So, I would check out my video. It's like what I ate on my road trip because I didn't really cook anything. It was like two days of me traveling, but you can bring oatmeal cause you probably have access to a microwave. So I would bring oatmeal. I would buy fresh fruit to eat as snacks 
and definitely check to see if there's like a Chinese or Asian restaurant in the area near you because you can just buy like rice and steamed vegetables and that's always a good meal option and if you're like annoying like me you could bring a bottle of sriracha with you so you'd always have flavor for your rice um and you could also check out stores that usually have like microwave rice bags and stuff so i would just stick to like basic whole plant foods you can even microwave sweet potatoes in your microwave so i think you would have a microwave in your hotel room if not just like go find a grocery store nearby and buy some like pre-cooked healthy or vegan foods but like don't die and freak out if your some of your food has oil in it or it's like a little bit higher in fat because you are on vacation and you should be enjoying yourself anyways um okay someone else says when they eat nuts like peanuts they can't stop eating them they never eat end up eating a handful or a small amount and have ever had a nut problem like them um i definitely think peanut butter can be addicting and it could just be because your body really likes the taste of peanut butter and like if you want to eat peanut butter girl is vegan so you can go for it like animals aren't gonna die so at the end of the day i don't really see like why is that big of a deal but um it could also be because fats are more calorically dense and if you're not giving your body enough calories when you start to eat more calorically dense foods your body's gonna be like yes i need more of this i need fuel to keep myself alive to keep you alive so that could be why your body is craving it if you're not eating enough during the day. So I would definitely make sure you're eating enough carbs. Like I've mentioned before, it's really important. And yeah, this, the, like, the biggest thing stems, I feel like, from calorie deprivation. That's why you feel weak. That's why you feel hungry. That's why you crave more calorically dense foods, etc. Okay, so we're down to the last question. And it is in a terrible, oh no wait, there's two more. The first one is would you raise your kids as vegans? And yes, obviously I'm not raising kids who eat meat. Like I'm, why would I expose, like give them cruelty as food? I don't even see meat and dairy and eggs as food anymore really. But yeah, if I ever find a man and have kids, they will definitely be vegan. Now the last question is really the last question. It says, in a terrible hypothetical situation where I were to break my ankle, what would I do to stay in shape? So I think this person had like good intentions when they were asking this question, but I also think it's like kind of messed up because people refuse to take rest days or when their body is injured, they're like, oh my God, I'm gonna get fat if I don't exercise for like two days. And like scientifically speaking, um, there have been studies done and you can take a whole week off of exercise guys and you're not going to lose any fitness. And even if you lose a minor amount, you will gain it back in no time at all. So um, I wouldn't be like freaking out because if you break your ankle, your body needs to be using the energy you're getting from food in order to repair itself and to heal your broken bone. Breaking your ankle is also like really hard. You probably sprayed your ankle. But anyways, that's a physical therapist and me talking. But um, yeah, I would not do any exercises on my legs. And if I really felt like moving my body, Maybe I would do like some gentle like yoga on like my upper body or just like stretch. I probably wouldn't do anything that crazy, but after you see a physical therapist, which you should see if you like break or sprain your ankle that badly, um, they would be able to instruct you when you're able to do more advanced exercise. And when I was like getting back into shape, I would do something much more low impact, like cycling on a bike. That's always really, good um or going in the water that's actually probably better because there's like no direct pressure on your foot so i would do that but honestly i'd probably just relax and let my body heal and do its thing but that is the end of the questions and i think i'm going to end the mukbang here i hope you all enjoyed this um getting to know me more while i eat some food and if you'd like me to film more mukbangs definitely let me know i would always be down and yes thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for supporting my channel and i love you guys and i hope you have a great evening or whatever rest of the day whatever time of the day it is so yeah bye i'm not gonna like close the camera though because it's too far away it's like okay bye for real